one more day, Father God. You've allowed us to come and be in your presence. One more day, God, you gave us activity of our limbs. One more day, God, you clothed us in our right mind. One more day, God, the rocks did not have to cry out for us because, Lord God, we know how to praise you in here. One more day, God, one more day, God, of your peace, your comfort, your love, and your promises. Father God, we just say hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. We set a spirit, Father God, in the atmosphere, Lord God, of all of your glory, God. Just acknowledging you for who you are, God. Oh God, oh God, we thank you for your sacrifice of your blood of Jesus, God. For without him, we would be nothing. Lord God, right now, hide me behind the cross, Lord God, and you have your way in this place. Father God, I just ask and pray a special blessing over our pastor and over our first lady and our first family, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you for the vision of the visionaries, Lord God. And Lord God, we speak life to the vision and the mission of the going hard for Christ family. Y'all give God some praise. Thank you, God. 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 Hallelujah. How y'all doing tonight? Amen. Amen. It's good to see y'all. Um, if y'all don't mind, I'm going to jump right into the word for the purpose of time. I, I, I have to be obedient to my spirit. As I stand here and think about Oral Roberts, think about Benny, Billy Graham, think about Bishop McIntosh, think about even Pastor Peoples and Pastor Manning, our spiritual covering, standing in this place. I'm humbled, I'm grateful, I'm thankful and I take nothing for granted. So as it is customary of this house, I ask that everyone that can please stand as we read the word of the Lord. The word begins with Genesis 16 and one. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him but she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, the Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps, perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarah, Sarah's proposal. We're going to jump over to 18 and go to the foundation of the scripture. The Lord appeared again to Abraham near the oak grove belonging to Mamre. One day, Abraham was sitting at the entrance to his tent during the hottest part of the day. He looked up and noticed three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran to meet them and welcomed them, bowing low to the ground. My Lord, he said, if it pleases you, stop here for a while. Rest in the shade of this tree while water is brought to wash your feet. And since you've honored your servant with this visit, let me prepare some food to refresh you before you continue on your journey. Jump, jump, drop down, I'm sorry, to 10. Then, of course, the angels, um, they made a, a commandment. Uh, uh, they spoke. They made a decree. In verse 10, it says, Then one of them said, I will return to you about this time next year, and your wife, Sarah, will have a son. You may be seated. 
May the Lord bless the hearing and the reading of his holy word. Literally, there's millions of people that attend churches every Sunday, every Wednesday. They're coming to get a word. They're coming to get a word. There was a word spoken by John the Baptist. In Mark 1, the fourth verse, he said, Repent, for the end is near. Is that not enough word to convince us to transform our destructive behavior? Repent, for the end, that's it, that's all, is near. I want you all to understand something. And this is what God put on my heart. And I'm still with the message. But I think it's important for you guys to understand that both Peter and Judas denied Jesus. Now, what we have to understand is that there was a difference. Because whereas Peter went on to preach and to do the will of God, whereas Peter went on knowing what Christ had put inside of him, he went on to preach the word and affected 3,000. This is in Acts 2 and 14. In Acts 4 and 4, it talks about 5,000 being saved. The faith that it takes to be able to walk the word out the way that we receive it is something that we're supposed to do with the word when we receive it. Judas, on the other hand, he aborted his purpose. He went and hung himself. Even though he was right up under Jesus, just like Peter and the other 11 disciples, the word never germinated. It never manifested. It was never effective. We need to understand why. Was it that Judas wasn't planted? Was it that Jesus knew something because he called him out right there at the table. So some of the stuff we go through is for purpose. But let's go back to Sarah because that was the part that, that really started in my spirit. When I started reading, and I've read this passage time and time again, but what the Holy Spirit did this time is it quickened me. And I started thinking about that one son the one purpose that Sarah had to give birth to the nation. Sarah didn't abort the process. She waited. In her time of waiting, the things that were going on in Sarah's mind for her to give her husband away to another woman, you women that are married, you know that that would be something that you really cannot stomach, saying, Go sleep with my husband. But this is the love and the reverence that she had for her husband. So we have to understand and set the stage here that what was happening behind the scenes is that Sarah was getting in God's way to do something that God didn't authorize her to do. So we have to understand that there are times that we're stepping out of position if we're not being instructed and we're not close enough to get the word. See, we're, we're all broken. We all have a story. Each one of us have a story. The thing about our story, though, is that because we don't allow the fact that in Revelations uh, um, um, 11, 12, 12, 11, excuse me, and they overcame him. See, we stay stuck. We stay stuck in our brokenness because we don't get overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. We stay stuck hiding. We stay sh stuck feeling ashamed. And then what we do when we're stuck is we go get our maidservant. We let somebody else take the responsibility of what we're supposed to be waiting on God for because we didn't have the patience the fruits of the Spirit, to wait on God. See, God still has a promise. 
He still has a promise. And we may not know exactly how to access the promise, but that's why we're supposed to walk it out, y'all. We're supposed to walk it out. It's a process. It didn't take you overnight to get where you are today. It was a process. It took time for someone to abuse you. It took time for somebody to molest you. It took time for somebody to rape you. It took time for somebody to abandon you because abandonment happens after you're attached to something. So we have to understand that God has a plan and he has a purpose. And yes, Judas, yes, Judas was in assignment as well. But just like each and every one of us, he had free will. He could have decided to follow Jesus. That old childhood song, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Jesus, Judas turned back. And them 30 pieces of silver that he received for our Savior's life, he went and threw them back into the temple. That's where he threw them. There was no benefit to Judas, so he hung himself. We have to understand that there is a concept that we feel is notable. It's notable because I showed up at the church like you're doing God a favor. There are root system problems. Y'all get this. I'm really, I, I prayed and asked God to let me take my time. There's root system issues that... As pastor stated, I needed to come to some place that had a now what? I had been going to church, but I didn't have a now what. What the now what looked like in my life was understanding I wasn't junk. Being told that you are nothing and a nobody. Being told that you're ugly. Being told that you're Fat, being told that you can't bear children, Sarah. These are things that cause us to have internal issues in our mind. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5, it tells us, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing every high thing that exalts itself against who? Against the knowledge of God. So at some point, we have to get the knowledge of God. It wasn't that Sarah wasn't a faithful wife. It wasn't that Sarah wasn't a, a faithful woman. The issue was that Sarah was 99. The issue may be that we've moved forward in our lives and we've passed the stage of where I look like I can go to college and get a degree to better myself. The issue of I'm past childbearing years. The issues may be this, it may be that, it may be this. I have a felony, I can't get a job. See, all of these things God has placed in your path. Because that one, that one child, that one Isaac that Sarah had, that one Isaac that Sarah had, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, is in the lineage of Jesus. So she didn't have to have five children. She had to have that one. And that one was born on assignment, that one had purpose, that one God was very strategic and intentional about making sure that even at 99, that he could show that he was God. Yes, we have to expect the unexpected. And this is the title of my message. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Many times what we see when we're participating in church activities is we see 
broken people. And as they're functioning in their brokenness and in their doubt and in those places that the world had brought them to, now, when they come here, we don't look at them like they're broken like us. We look at them as we're expecting something. We've already groomed them. We've already checked them out. and We already have an expectation of what and how they're supposed to treat us. But see, if you have already gotten to the place where you're expecting everything, there's no room for God. Expect the unexpected. God is coming with the miracles, signs, and wonders, but we have to make room for God to come in. Our minds have been more conditioned on the limitations of God instead of the unlimited promises of God. I remember talking to my pastor once. It's been about a year ago, and he may not remember even speaking with me about it, but he was speaking with me, and he said, Francetta, turn to Psalms 119. It's full of, you remember that? He said, it's full of commands. It's full of instruction. See, when the man of God tells you to do something, it, it's beneficial. Because had Judas, had Judas gotten everything that he was supposed to get from the Lord, he may not have hung himself. How many of us are hanging ourselves by our lifestyle? How many of us are hanging ourselves by being inconsistent? How many of us are, are hanging ourselves because we're not allowing ourselves to put in information to cover up the, not cover up, to put in information to restore us back to the place that God instructed us to be? See, when, when stuff starts hitting you, and this week has been a week where I've been battling, and when stuff starts hitting you, you start focusing more on the thing than the creator of the thing. The enemy is going to come anytime you're doing anything for God. He's going to come expected, especially if you're that one that God has assigned for purpose. He's coming. He's coming. Because all it took was one. All it took was one. Are you that one? Are you that one? Y'all are awfully quiet in here. <laughs> I want you guys to understand that our minds is a battlefield. I want you to understand that there is a ship that's literally sailing in the kingdom, right? I'm going to give you some scriptures for those that are note-taking. Many times we try to avoid these ships. Joseph, Brother Joseph preached um, a couple of weeks ago about don't miss the boat. I want to talk to you tonight a little bit about the ship. Fellowship together, 1 Corinthians 1, 9 through 10. Lordship acceptance of Christ that's Luke 646 ownership that's Genesis God is the owner the author the finisher of our faith worship first chronicles 16 23 31 Fellowship, lordship, ownership, worship, flow. Flow. We're to flow in the spirit of a holy God. There's a rhythm. We hear this all the time. There's a rhythm that's in the kingdom. Many times we get out of rhythm because the enemy wants to speed us up because he wants us to go get us an illegitimate child. He wants us to take our responsibility and put it off on someone else. So let me make it plain. As the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he's coming to steal your relationships. He's coming to steal your purpose. He's coming to steal the value that people that you love may have for you. He's coming to kill, steal, and destroy the gifts that you may have for the kingdom. And as I stand here tonight, being transparent, because that's what the Holy Spirit advised me to do. There was a time when I had a Hagar. That was my grandmother. 
I was a young mother. I was a young mother. Still in the world, broken from my mother being dying when I was 13 years old. At 16, I had my first child. So I didn't abort the child. What I did was I had a Hagar that I birthed the child, but I gave it to Hagar. My grandmother helped me raise my daughter during a time that I should have been building relationship. There's another ship. During that time that I should have had someone that was pulling me to the house of the Lord. So those of you that are sitting here in the house of the Lord tonight, there's a responsibility because you're that one that's here tonight. You're that one that's here to pull someone in your family that may be struggling, that may be hurting into their necks. You're that one that's a sign. Don't sidestep the process. Don't allow the enemy to tell you that you're not capable of having someone in your life that you're able to lead. We're all leaders. That's the other ship, leadership. We have to be able to focus on the qualities that we have in us. And we can spend all of our lives looking at the negative things in our past, but we can't change our past. What we get to change is our future. So we get to make different decisions about where we're going on this ship. As we're rowing on this ship, on this ship, I need you to help row this ship. We need you to help row this ship. God is controlling the rudder under the water. We need you to help control this. Broken, it's all good, no problem. Judas betrayed Jesus, but he sat at the table with him. Amen. We have to understand that there is nothing that we have done that has disqualified us. Peter denied Jesus, but he still was not disqualified from his purpose. So we have to understand that no matter where we are, at whatever level of the game, what we have to do now is we have to go and dig a new well, y'all. We got to go and take some tools so that we're able to move into our next season because we don't know what God has planned for us, but we do know that who holds the key to our future. We know that already. And we know that through the blood of Jesus that there is no condemnation in Christ. We know through his blood that we have authority, we have power, we have everything that we need to function in our future. That is not going to help you function in your past. All of that stuff that you're carrying like a suitcase up to the altar, but you can't pass the first step because you're carrying bags of your broken bones in your past and, and putting energy into broken relationships, ex-husbands, ex-wives, abortions, things that God just said, come to me, daughter, come to me, son. I got you, it's okay. It doesn't matter if you've had a divorce. It doesn't matter, none of that. We're not gonna judge you. Even if you might be homosexual, bisexual, whatever you are, come to the house. I got you, daughter. I got you, son. Because when you come, I'm going to clean you up. But you got to trust me to clean you up. You got to come and surrender that to the altar and not pick it back up. Because see, there's a problem. There's a problem, Christians. When we get into the house, we put on this apparel and we're walking around like the scribes and Pharisees. Yes, I'm holy. It's a holy parade. And I'm going to look at everybody else that don't look like my holiness. Undress your holiness today. Come before the Lord naked. That's what's required of us. When we come before the Lord naked, because see, sometimes what people don't tell you is about them sexual sins. They don't tell you about the fact they watch pornography at night. They don't tell you about the fact that they go into the strip clubs in another town because they don't want nobody to see. They're not telling you about the fact that they're sneaking off to a casino somewhere, hiding behind, okay, that Christian apparel. Because when I come back to Tulsa, then I'm going to walk with authority because somebody might see me. I'm telling it on myself because there was a time in my life where I would drive way across town. Now, y'all, it's been over 20 years. I drive way across town to go to a liquor store because I didn't want people that I was going to church with to see me. 
But I didn't have no conviction or problem because I didn't have no relationship with Christ about coming to church drunk. I didn't have no problem with driving up to the church house with a joint. That's how long ago it's been, y'all. Y'all know they're doing something different now. I didn't have no problem driving up to the church with a joint in my ashtray waiting when I got out of church to go smoke my joint. So now y'all see me. I'm that one. Y'all see me. I'm that one. Had my mother aborted the process, no matter how bad our relationship was, I was that one. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So tonight, I'm just letting y'all know you might be that one. Don't disconnect from the process. Don't act like you can't come up to this altar and give yourself away to the holy God because all he needs is for you to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross and you halfway there, baby. You halfway there. It takes nothing. It takes nothing to come to church. It takes nothing to come to church. It takes everything you got to come to Christ. It takes everything you got. You got to be willing to die, baby. You got to be willing to have a spiritual death in your life. And T.D. Jake said, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. He said, get ready. Get ready for your breakthrough. Because we can murmur and complain. We can talk about what our past looked like. We can even be mad about what somebody did to us. But God said, get ready. I'm going to bless you anyhow. Because when you was in your mama's womb, I knew you. I anointed you and I called you for purpose. I called you for greatness. Stephanie, when they tried to take your life, your mind, Oh, my God, God had a plan for you, woman of God. Hallelujah. She didn't kill herself. She didn't hang herself. She liked Peter. She, gonna, she got a testimony. She liked Peter. She got a testimony. Yeah, God. She got a testimony, y'all. We all got our testimonies. Oh, God. We all got our testimonies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, we give you the glory for being in our right minds. God, we give you the glory. See, if you don't praise him, the chains won't break off of you. If you don't praise him and worship him in spirit and in truth, <laughs> the chains won't break off, baby. You're going to stay in bondage. 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 You're going to keep dragging dragon trying to pull your past up into your future and God said no it can't come you can't get to the next level yeah. glory to God it's notable that we come to the house of the Lord and keep coming keep coming because see even back then when I was drinking and I was coming to church drunk I was getting enough word in me when I was coming that I kept coming. I was getting enough word in me. I, you know, I, I said, uh, uh, I show sure like the way that Christian and Amber sing, so I'm going to keep coming. Oh, I like to hear when Lisa going to sing. I'm going to keep coming. I'm going to keep coming. And before you know it, there's been a transformation of your mind. Because at some point, at some point, we become honest within ourselves. Because see, the, the reality <laughs> is y'all know we be lying to ourselves. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, I'm super fantastic. How you doing, woman of God? I'm outstanding. I'm talking about me. <laughs> I'm not talking about y'all. That was the way I functioned in my brokenness because I didn't want y'all to know that something was wrong with me because I felt like the church people was going to criticize me and put me down. So when I came to the encounter at Going Hard for Christ Church in November 2013, they gave me a sheet of paper. I was like, oh, no, I'm not getting ready to put all this stuff on this piece of paper. I'm not going to tell them everything. Because, see, here we take inventory, just like a cleaning crew. We take inventory. When you go clean up the bathroom and you're a janitor or you work at one of these restaurants, they got an inventory sheet. Did you clean the toilet? Did you wipe behind the toilet? Did you mop the floor? <laughs> 
That was the kind of inventory list I got when I got here. <laughs> have you ever? <laughs> have you ever? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I have. But if they make me read this out loud, I'm leaving. I'm not going to do this. But the reality was that that was the freest moment for me. I have been tarrying at other places for the Holy Spirit, and nobody told me I had to quit smoking cigarettes and quit lying. Nobody told me. I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought that I could still walk in my dysfunction, and it was okay, and that I would receive the power of the Holy Spirit. But I came here, and that's when I got interested in reading these scriptures. And I learned that light and darkness is not going to dwell in the same place. And if that's not a shout cue, nothing is. Light and darkness will not dwell in the same place. Now, God is going to be patient with you as you're walking this thing out. We got people to escort you into your next. We got people that's going to escort you to this next step. But don't get on that next step and pick up somebody else's problem. Because that's what we try to do. We get holy and then now I'm going to take your problems now. <laughs> yeah, we get holy and then now I'm going to take on your problems. But that's not what God said. We have to be transparent enough with ourselves to know the areas of our own lives. God already see you. God already see you. Woman of God, I, I wasn't here Saturday. I had a speaking engagement. So I give honor to God that you're here today. When we lose a child, when we lose a child, that's a feeling that I can't even imagine. I, I, I can't even imagine that. So God bless you forever. And I know that that's the area of your life that will never be the same. You will always miss your baby. But just know that there's a God that's a comforter. He's a way maker. He's a heart fixer. And there's nights that you're going to cry. And there's days that you're going to be driving down the street and you're going to break down. And it's okay. Because even that... You're that one now, woman of God. God is going to use your testimony. There's kids that's out here getting shot down in these streets every day. God is going to use your testimony, woman of God, because that's how we overcome the enemy. So take your time. Take your time and allow yourself to go through the process of grief. But then there's going to come a time, woman of God, when women that are going through that, or it may be a child that's out here wayward that need to hear from you about a situation. Maybe it was friends or whatever. And let me tell you something about your friends, y'all. If you don't have a friend that's willing to cut a hole in the roof and lead you down to Jesus, you ain't got no friend. You ain't got no friend. The only friend I want is a friend that's willing to take me to see Jesus. I don't need no other friends. I don't need no other friends. If you can't take me to him, we ain't got no relationship. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has a plan. God has a plan. Let's understand what faith is all about. Faith, according to dictionary.com, is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. It's a strong belief in God and the doctrines of a religion-based spiritual apprehension, rather proof. The Bible says faith is the substance. We're going to say, stay right there and say law on that for a moment. It's faith. That's the food that we need in order to walk this thing out. It's by faith that we get up and come to the classes. It's by faith that we keep coming to church. It's by faith when iron starts sharpening iron and you start getting cut and you start bleeding in the church that you stay connected because you know that the enemy is trying to pick you off. The enemy is trying to separate you from your purpose because you're that one. You are that one. You are that one. And if you leave, if you don't get nothing else from what I'm telling you, you've got to expect the unexpected. 
Because I'm telling you something. I just gave y'all my testimony about being that one that was coming to church, eating the hot tamales and all that stuff, you know, because I was in the choir trying to sing. No. Anyway, so, um, and, 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 you know, I, I, was, I was that one, right? So, I'm here, as humbly as I know how, chosen not by my pastor, but chosen by God. Because he anointed me. He knew me when I was woven in my mother's womb. So y'all live your testimony. They say now live your best life. Live your best life. But don't let your grace period expire. Live your best life. But don't let your grace period expire. We all got a measure of grace over our lives. And once that runs out, we're gone. And Dr. Miles Monroe said that the cemetery is the richest place on earth because we're dying with all of our gifts and our ideas. We're dying with major cures. We're dying with businesses and books. And we're dying with stuff that the world needs in order to help the next generation along. Sarah's one responsibility was something that happened from her expecting or receiving the unexpected, the child. That was her one responsibility. And once she birthed that baby, she died. Not immediately, so I'm not taking the Bible out of context, y'all. But understand what I'm saying is that there's no more message about anything significant pertaining to Sarah other than the birth of Isaac. The process that we have to go through, the process is not a quick process, y'all. Sarah waited 99 years to birth her purpose. You have an opportunity today to remove the junk out of the storage of your mind, your will, and your emotions. So even if, even if that alcohol is calling you, there is a root system problem that's pertaining to that alcohol calling you. Even if there is a drug addiction, there is a root system issue that's dealing with that drug calling you. Even if you're abusive to your spouse, there's a root system issue that you haven't dealt with yet. What do you mean, Pastor Francis? Okay, I'm glad you asked. People typically that have gone through any level of abuse, hurt, molestation, rape, there's a, they're kind of categorized by either going to jail, selling their bodies, using drugs, being, uh, having low self-esteem, depressed, suppressed in their purpose. There are things psychologically that happens when we're damaged. Shanika here? Pastor Janice, Minister Janice, Shanika here? Broken crayons. They still color. Broken crayons. They still color. Even though we're broken, we're still usable. So don't allow anything to discount, discredit, or to take you away from what God has planned for you in your life. This is not a message where my plan was to pray you, get you all excited and things like that. But it's one that I'm telling you, I had a whole message prepared. And God, on this altar today, when I got here, said, Sarah, this, that. He told me what to say and do, and I submitted to the Holy Spirit. I have a couple of points that I want to give you. Point number one, positioning for the unexpected blessings. Anything properly planted will receive the nourishment that's required to grow. So we have to understand there's a requirement that we're properly planted. Now, 
as much as my experience of church and the things that um, the enemy showed me against the church that deems to me as being problems that allowed me to make excuses and say that I wasn't going to go, it was something that kept dragging me back, kept dragging me back, kept dragging me back. I wasn't planted, but at least I would go. I'm sharing that testimony because I think it's important because the enemy is trying to pick you off before you become great. There are things that if you're not planted, you're going to wash away. There are things that can't sprout. There's things that can't grow. There's nutrients and food that can't be received. There's beauty that can't happen if you're not properly planted. So there's a process even to the planting because what we know about anything planted is it's planted in the dark. This is why we have to read the word and flip them pages in the dark when we get along with God. This is the reason why we have to cry out to him and call out to him and worship him in spirit and in truth and let him know whatever issues that you can't tell me, tell him. You don't have to tell me about your stuff. I don't have to know because I'm not the way maker. I'm not the miracle worker. So if you want to give anything to me, Give it to the Lord first. See what he got to say about it. Because I, I stayed on that second step for a long time. My pastor had to say, Fred Sutter, uh-uh, I'm not getting ready to let you. I got rid of my stuff. I was cold. Then I got a little knowledgeable in Christ and got up on the second step. And then I was spending from 3 o'clock in the afternoon to 11, 12, 2 o'clock in the morning while people was calling me, Mama Francetta, Mama Francetta, Mama Francetta. I was disillusioned. Because I felt like, because they stuff was worse than my stuff, I felt better, and that's messed up. <laughs> that's messed up. Real talk. But I stayed on that second step until I had a shepherd <laughs> that pulled my coattail. He said, woman of God, I'm sure hearing your name a lot. Then I talked to Minister Janice. She said, give him an assignment, get him an assignment. <laughs> and I was obedient because I don't know how to do this. Just like many of you don't know how. So we have to walk this thing out. We have to learn how to do this. We know how to be broken. We know how to do everything that's a part of our past. We, we don't know how to do this. So it comes with instruction. Even Jesus spent time in the temple to be instructed. I don't have a watch. Y'all, please help me to be. Point two, um, we've got to prune the dead weight from our life. We cannot change our past. However, we have full authority over our futures. James 1.21 is the scripture that you can go and read. I want to also give you um, D under that. Allow the sun to lighten your load, which is the Lord. In 1 Peter 5.7, the Lord said, cast your cares upon him. Tonight, I hope that I've said something that has stirred in your spirit to the point that you realize that brokenness is okay. I hope tonight that there's a certain thing that was said by the Spirit of God that stirred in your spirit and made you know that tonight is your night to come and lay all your burdens, cast all your cares upon the Lord. And make sure that on tonight, you allow your journey with the Lord to begin. I'm going to ask you all to please stand. The altar is now open for any of those that would like to come and give your life to Christ. Do we have anyone in the house that may have never given their lives to Christ? If so, please hold your hands up. If you'd like to receive Christ on tonight. The altar is open. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Father God, we thank you for the word on tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. The substance, Father God, of things hoped for, God, that you set the stage, Lord God, the substance 
of things hoped for. Lord, we don't have to stay in our past. We get to walk into the substance of things hoped for on tonight, God. We celebrate you, Lord. We celebrate you in this season, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your compassion and for your spirit, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord God, for not giving up on us, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that even though they tried to bury us, Father God, they never realized we were a seed. They never realized we was a seed, God. They never realized that you had a purpose, that we were going to grow gracefully in your will, Father God, and complete the work that started on Calvary. Lord God, I thank you for those that come before you on tonight. And Lord God, we just celebrate being a family in fellowship, having relationship, Lord God. And we honor your Lordship in the name of Jesus. Amen.